Okay, so I'm going to show you now how to do void forms, which is basically just carving out shapes within a shape that already exists. So to do this, um, just, you know, I've, I've moved a lot of my stuff out of the way just so I could see it a little better. It's also good to, to um, down here um, at these, the boxes down at the bottom, which are the same setup as, as Revit. The second one in, have it at hidden line. I mean, not hidden line, I'm sorry, shaded, because then you're going to be able to see when we kind of carve out these spaces. Um, I'm going to roll over just what vo void form does. You can sort of see the video really quickly. But basically what it is, is you have a pre-existing shape and then you basically uh, minus out another shape. So it's kind of showing you there. Um, and there's different versions of this somehow, and it's similar to what we just did when we made mass objects. So the first one is a void extrusion where, let me hold it there. Um, you have one shape, you're creating another shape and it just minuses it out. So we're gonna do a similar to that, but I'm gonna do circles because it'll, it just, it's easier to visualize. So first, what you want to do is just make a, a rectangle block here. So we're going to go to extrusion, um, pick the rectangle up here under modify create. Um, I'm left clicking and I'm just making a basic rectangle. Um, pay attention to the depth because this will vary sort of what happens in your object. Um, I'm going to make mine four feet just so you can kind of see some of the differences that happens here. So four feet. Um, and then I just green arrow check mark that. If you want to double check it on the 3D view, you can see it's a little bit taller than the others. So back to the reference level. Now what I want to do is create a void form and a void extrusion. So it's the first choice there. I want to create it on this object. I'm going to do a circle. So I'm going to have my circle right here. Um, yeah, I can kind of move it over a little bit. Um, right now, the depth of that extrusion, what it's taking out is going to be four feet. So it should take out a column of space all throughout this rectangle. Um, I'm going to make a couple others while we're here just so you can kind of see. Oops, there we go, that one. Okay, we're going to click uh, the green arrow just so you can see both of them. Uh, you don't really see anything just yet until literally you left click off somewhere in space. So see how now it's basically minus out that circle in space. And if I go over to the 3D, you can see that there's basically these tubes that have sort of you know, extracted out of the space. Now, if I wanted to change the depth, however, I could over here, see how they were four feet? Now, if I wanted to make them two feet, um, they're actually, they're kind of flipped down underneath. So I got to kind of flip them around here and you can see them from the bottom. So they've condensed themselves where they only go up. Let's see if we can hover two feet into the space there. See how they're, they're doing that? Um, I'm going to put them back to four just so we can see them again and kind of go shimmy back around so you can see them from the top. And that's what they look like there. So they're kind of minusing out the space within an object. Um, again, we, we don't use this a ton in interior design, but you would be using this, you know, if you're making models from scratch and things like that. So let me go back to reference level. So I'm just going to briefly show you some of the, the other things that that you can do with void spaces. Um, they're a little quirky and like I said, I'm going to show you quick, but we're, we, we don't tend to use them too much. So I'm going to delete these ones out just for now. So I'm going to keep using this rectangle. We're going to go to create void forms. So the next one is void blend. So it's just like the other blend. So the object in the top, in this case, I'm going to do, let's see, we're going to do it a circle. So we'll do it like that. All right. And then we're going to do, let's see, so we have to do edit the bottom now. So I'm going to do, let me see. Uh, actually, I think I got to flip it around. I don't know if I have to do it the other way. Let's see what it does. We'll see what it's doing here. And let's see. Oh, it's inside there. Oh, yeah. All right. So you can kind of see the guy in here. So he's got to stretch out a little bit more just so we can see what it's doing. And I don't know if it's really cutting through there. Kind of is. Oh, there it does. Okay. So yeah, these guys are a little weird. So what happened is, so it started out as a circle on one side and I'll kind of line it up here. And then it goes down to a rectangle at the bottom. Um, I've never used this for anything. I mean, it, it's kind of cool the shapes it can make, but just so you can see what it's doing. Um, so we're going to go back onto reference level again. So here's, you can kind of see it now, now that I've pulled it through my shape some more. Um, the other ones that it can do are, I'll just show you the video. You can use the revolve to do the same thing where you make a shape and say you pick a corner of your cube and it basically shaves it out, the shape there. So that's the void revolve. Um, I'm just going to show you this so you know what they do. But uh, like I said, we don't, I've not used this really. <laughs> 
and, and the void sweep. Hold on. Oh, let me get back to there so you can see the video of that too. Oh, I think I started up and we don't want to do that. I'm going to say no. Um, so if we go over here, ho hover over again, void sweep and void blend, it's doing the same kind of things when the video comes up. Again, you're, you're making the shapes like we did in the first video. Um, and you're just kind of sort of using it to carve out that shape. So it's a bit like push pull sort of as you kind of, you know, make stuff in SketchUp, but obviously there, it's much more mechanically minded here. And that's one thing to remember a lot with modeling things in Revit is um, it's going to be really dependent on math and the shapes. And you'll see that when we do our little coffee table too. All right. So we're going to kind of, this is our intro. And then our next video, we're going to move on and just do a vase together. And then we're going to eventually make a whole like coffee table set too.